You know, common, Congressman Jim Jordan wanted uh, revenge on uh, Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan District Attorney, for prosecuting Donald Trump, you know, for the, for the case that he's facing right now. Uh, he threatened Bragg with oversight, dragging him before his committee, threatening him with contempt of Congress, putting a right-wing target on Bra Bragg's back by publicizing him to draw sharpshooters from a far, as far away as Wyoming or Idaho, and facing the possibility of going to jail if he didn't answer Jordan's questions right. Jordan, James Comer, and Brian Steele, three chairmen of three different committees, wrote to Bragg, quote, by July 2019, federal prosecutors determined that no additional people would be charged alongside Michael Cohen. Your apparent decision to pursue criminal charges or federal authorities decline to do so requires oversight. In other words, we're going to drag you before committees, Mr. Bragg, D.A. Bragg. You know, they were furious that Bragg would prosecute Donald Trump for a crime that the Department of Justice had decided back in 2019 didn't really need to be prosecuted. But why didn't Bill Barr's Department of Justice proceed after they had already put Michael Cohen in prison for a year for delivering the check that Donald Trump wrote, that Donald Trump authorized? Donald Trump was the guy who slept with Stormy Daniels, not Michael Cohen. And God, Donald Trump was the guy running for president whose campaign would have been badly uh, affected had Stormy Daniels come out and told the truth to the public, as she tried to do uh, via David Pecker and the National Enquirer, uh, had she told that story, Hillary Clinton would have become president. I mean, there's pretty much no doubt about that. You'll recall that, that there was this collective, you know, gasp uh, just a couple weeks before the election when the Access Hollywood tape came out. And a lot of evangelicals just started backing up and going, whoa, we hadn't realized how crazy this guy was. Well, if that had been followed in quick succession by with, oh, and it wasn't just talk because the big... The big excuse was, oh, it's just locker room talk, you know, it's just locker room talk. And, I, I mean, even Melania came out and said, oh, it's just locker room talk. He talks like that. Don't worry about it. He doesn't do that kind of thing. Well, it turns out he does. And had Stormy, McDan uh, Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal and, and, and the doorman, for that matter. Uh, this is another person who's going to be testifying in this trial. There was a doorman at the Trump Tower who uh, was going to write, who, you know, went to, again, went to the National Enquirer and said, I got a story to sell. And the National Enquirer paid him off to catch and kill the story. And his story was that he had personal knowledge of a woman who had been going up to Trump Tower to, to sleep with Trump and then brought the baby and said, this is his baby to the doorman. So, you know, it's like... Had that stuff come out, Donald Trump would not have gotten elected. That evangelical vote would have melted away. I mean, keep in mind, he only won by 44,000 votes in three states. He won the Electoral College. I mean, he lost the popular vote by over 3 million votes. So why didn't Bill Barr's Department of Justice proceed after they'd already put Michael and Cohen in prison for a year for delivering the check? that Donald Trump wrote, signed, and asked him to deliver. Well, it turns out that according to Jeffrey Berman, the lifelong Republican and U.S. attorney appointed by Trump to run the prosecutor's office in the Southern District of New York, uh, you know, he wrote a book called Holding the Line, published in September of 2022 about his experiences in that area. And in that, he came right out and accused his boss, Bill Barr, of killing the federal investigation into Trump's directing and covering up that conspiracy in order to influence the 2016 election. The Washington Post noted when the book came out, quote, Berman says Barr stifled campaign finance investigations emanating from the Cohen case and even floated seeking a reversal of Cohen's conviction, just like Barr would later do with another Trump ally, Michael Flynn. Barr also intervened in the case of another Trump ally, Roger Stone, to seek, her like, to seek a light, lighter sentence than career prosecutors wanted. This is why Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg had to pick up the case if the crime was going to be exposed and prosecuted. After all, this is the crime that literally turned the 2016 election to Trump and away from Hillary Clinton. And without it, all the polling and political science, most political scientists argue that Hillary Clinton would have been our president for at least four years, and Trump would have retired into real estate obscurity. 
But Bill Barr put an end to Berman's investigation, according to Berman. The DOJ pretended to be investigating Trump for another few months, then quietly announced that they weren't going to continue the investigation. The news media responded with a shrug of the shoulders, and America kind of forgot that Cohen had, been, had committed the crime for which he spent a year in Rikers Island at the request, at the, at the demand of his boss, Donald Trump. I mean, typically when, you know, when somebody, like if you hire somebody to kill your husband or wife and they do it, you're going to go to jail too. You paid for the job, right? You, you commissioned the crime. Trump commissioned this crime. He should have gone to jail. Now, in 2023, the New York Times uh, picked up Bill Barr's cover story and ran with it, ignoring Berman's claims, uh, even though he was the guy in charge of the Southern District of New York. The article essentially reported that Maine justice wouldn't prosecute because Cohen wouldn't testify to earlier crimes, Trump might have been ignorant of the law, and that the decision was made by prosecutors in New York and not by Barr. Uh, you know, it's pretty thin stuff. Incomplete testimony, ignorance of the law, they, that doesn't stop prosecutors from prosecuting people. But the story stuck and the tri Times went, ran with it. By contrast, this is what Berman wrote in his book. This, again, this was the guy who was the lead prosecutor in the Southern District of New York. He wrote, while Cohen had pleaded guilty, our office continued to pursue investigations related to other possible campaign finance violations, including by Trump. When Barr took over in February 2019, he not only tried to kill the ongoing investigations, but incredibly suggested that Cohen's conviction on campaign finance charges be reversed. Barr summoned Rob Kuzami in late February to challenge the basis of Cohen's plea, as well as the reasoning behind pursuing similar campaign finance charges against other individuals, including Trump. The directive Barr gave Kuzami, which was amplified that same day by a follow-up call from O'Callaghan, was explicit. Not a single investigative step could be taken. Not a single document in our position, possession could be reviewed until the evidence, the issue was resolved. And then about six weeks later, Kuzami returned to D.C. for another meeting about Cohen. He was accompanied by Bill Barr. And summarizing the story, Berman wondered out loud exactly why Bill Barr had sabotaged uh, extending their investigation. He says, but Barr's posture here raises obvious questions. Do you think dropping the campaign finance charges would bolster Trump's defense against impeachment charges? Was he trying to ensure that no other Trump associates or employees would be charged with making hush money payments and perhaps flip on the president? Or was it part of an effort to undo the entire, oh, uh, was, was the goal to ensure that the president could not be charged after leading, leaving office? I would answer yes. Or was it part of an effort to undo the entire series of investigations and prosecutions over the past two years of those in the president's orbits, Cohen, Roger Stone, and Michael Flynn. In retrospect, the answer appears to be yes to all of those. And that wasn't Barr's only time subverting justice while heading the Justice Department. Barr, sa Barr sa it says he, uh, Berman says he also ordered John Kerry investigated for possible prosecution for violating the Logan Act. Now, the Logan Act it says that as a private individual, you can't interfere in foreign policy. You know, like Trump telling uh, Michael John Mike Johnson not to, not to provide aid to Ukraine. Which, by the way, just you know, parenthetically, Mike Johnson says he's going to have a vote this week on aid to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I strongly encourage you right now to call your member of Congress and say, pass that aid to Ukraine. The telephone number for the congressional switchboard, particularly if you're represented by a Republican, is 202-224-3121. So anyhow, this was, you know, this was just the latest Bill Barr outrage. You've, you, you know, I've shared with you before how Bill Barr bailed out George H.W. Bush when he was, you know, facing the possibility of going to prison for having participated with Ronald Reagan's campaign. Um, you know, Bill Casey was running the campaign at the time, the former, you know, who then was made CIA director by Reagan. And then when Casey said he was going to testify that Reagan, you know, uh, blew up the hostage deal. Suddenly he had a seizure in his office at the CIA, got taken to Walter Reed, and they removed the part of his brain that controls speech. He was literally rendered speechless, the head of the CIA. It's pretty incredible when you think about it. So anyhow, Bill Barr up to his eyeballs once again 
as the GOP's master fixer for at least the last 30 or 40 years. It's an incredible story, just incredible. By the way, Donald Trump secures de uh, submits the details on securing bond. This is getting interesting. I'll tell you about that after the break, too. This is the Tom Hartman Program. And Maine and the Interstate Alliance to elect the president by the national popular vote. A lot of stuff to tell you about, and then I'll pick up your calls, so stay with us. 